All right, this is uh, George Brad from Level Up, and he was asking, you know, uh, about his new concept piece. He wants to do kind of an Egyptian slave, um, and his description. He says it's harmless but powerful, um, and I would, you know, he wants to hear what we think. So, here's my my first my first thought on the composition. Um, there's there's two two ways I would tell you to, to kind of go with this and to do a little bit more to it. Um, the first realm of thought is that that as it stands now, the character doesn't look very slavish. It doesn't look very um, it doesn't look very harmless either and the reason I'm saying it doesn't look harmless is because of the simple fact that you've got four guys leading them around so you have two options one you can adjust the composition so that he becomes more violent and so what I would do is start by let's just uh, start a new layer here and I'm just going to foreground fill this real quick. Okay, so what I would do is you have two options. You're either making a raging beast, and from that point of view, then what you need to do is you need to change the, the aspect of what the character is. So if that's the, the case, what you need to do is put more of a ground view, um, bird's eye view, looking up, up at them. And then he becomes much more intimidating, um, especially with, you know, the big bulk that you've got. Um, and give him some, you know, give him a little bit of twist and turn, you know, make his arm go up in the air, raging. Um, make the, the chains go straight up. Um, everything needs to be tensed. You know, he's got to have like this, um, legs need to be spread, um, that being said, then your, your guys need to react with him, um, as well, and so what that means is you need to have guys, you know, like, pulling on it, and don't just stop with two, or, or one on each arm, but, you know, you've got, maybe you've got one guy here, and he's got something like this. And then you've got another guy here trying to, like, uh, tug of war this over. And, you know, the chain dropped down. And maybe he's, maybe he's got one guy in his head. You know, he's so big, so violent, he's got one guy in his hand. And the other guy is, you know, trying to pull back here and, you know get the the look of a struggle in the scene so that's that's one way to handle it the other way to handle it is if you want him docile um, then what you want to do is you want to create him um, you want to emphasize the largeness so get that bird's eye view again so big tall character but in this time instead of having him struggle against um, against uh, his captors, what you can do is essentially put his arms, and so you've got the chain, and then just have him led by one captor, um, something like that. And the weaker the captor, the more docile he's going to look so you know real thin maybe even a woman um, and then make this so you've got one chain and then you could almost design something where he's got separate chains around his um, around his arms as well the other thing too is make the collars big you know if you want that slave 
uh, look, give give the big collars, give you know, emphasize how big metal and that that'll actually say he's super strong, but he's got um, a, a lot of a lot of strength behind him, but he's not doing anything. So that's that's an aspect too. But either way, you want to change the composition so your bird's eye view is 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 more and that's going to make him a lot more intimidating put the horizon line down here instead of the vertical uh, composition that you have here um, the problem you have now is you've got these big bands but they don't feel very they don't feel very prisonerish um, so what i would say to do right off the bat with that is so on this particular one, what you want to do is put in big bands like this and give some thickness to this ring here so that it looks like it's got some weight to it and move this up over here like so. That that makes his head look a little bit smaller too. Um, I would almost tell you to grab and emphasize these bands too, make them bigger, and give the the iron grips on there. And then look at how how actual slave manacles are put together. A lot of them are actually riveted together, so they have big rivets in it, and you'd have the seam on it, so you you're actually um, folding it over or you know that type of thing but by emphasizing that he's much larger than what he is or the the bands are much larger and you're getting more of this uh, wrought iron look instead of um, instead of the the whole aspect that it's very uh, thin chains the other thing too is you know, if you're going to make these chains, emphasize that they're chains. Um, get a, a chain brush. I don't even know if I have one. And uh, let's see here. I know I, I thought I had a chain brush here. And I would emphasize the the simple fact that here this will this will work. So I'd emphasize the simple fact that these are chains and not um, they're not ropes. And I, I know you're still in the early composition, but those types of things will really help out. And don't make just one chain. Make like you know. A whole bunch of chains to kind of you know give it this this idea that you've got a little bit more power to it that type of thing maybe even twist the, the chains around um, and so if he's a docile slave you know also make these slack all right um, the other thing is don't make these so bilateral if you're walking forward with the arm, um, and this is assuming you're keeping this composition, but if you're walking forward with this arm, this arm will be bigger, and oops, sorry about that. Okay, so this arm will be bigger here, but this arm is going to go back in space. So you're actually going to, because this foot is forward, this one should be back. So what I would do is, in this case, um, grab this arm and shrinking is not the answer but you get the point um, put it back in space you actually need to have that arm go down and stuff so I hope that helps